Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the next procurement and policy class. Sarah will not be there, but we're going to have a class. So to start today's class, let us start with a recap of the procurement cycle. Since we are procure, uh, public administrators, let's look at what the PPDA gives us as the whole procurement cycle. So one, what we have right here are the stakeholders in public procurement. We have the user departments, the procurement and disposal unit, accounting officer, contracts committee, boards and councils, evaluation committee, the PPDA, which is a body and an authority, and then we have the PPDA uh, tribunal. So when we start with procurement plan and budgeting, and that is a must to do, that all user departments right here, the user departments, and then the boards and councils, who are also uh, user departments, must carry out procurement planning and budgeting. Then we need to make an assessment of the market price, what is happening out there, because you do not want suppliers to give you a very high price and a very low price. Then three, we need to look at procurement requisitions. Procurement requisitions are an authorization of user departments when they uh, need items. Then four, we need to confirm availability of funds. So the availability of funds is as a result of procurement planning and budgeting. The money has to be there for them to carry out the procurement. So five, we look at review and preparation of bidding documents. We shall look at this into details. But simply put, bidding is looking out for suppliers out there from the marketplace. What do suppliers have to offer and how can they meet the end users? This, the user departments, how can they meet their needs? Six, they look at approval of procurement method, the bidding documents, and the evaluation committee. This is the work of the contract committee. So they have to approve the procurement method. What procurement method are you going to use? Are you going to use competitive bidding? Are you going to identify a sole provider? Or you are going to use all? Seven, you need to advertise and invite for bids. You need to create as much window for competition as possible to create value for money. So it means that you need to advertise, create awareness about the procurement opportunity. Eight, we are looking at receiving and opening of bids. What, what offers have suppliers given you? So you need to receive them, look at them, and then nine, look at evaluation of those bids. What has each supplier given you? How can you evaluate? How can you uh, compare? What are the differences? What are the similarities? And who do you zero down on? 10, you need to review the evaluation report. What has the evaluation of bids given you? Which suppliers went through as the best evaluated suppliers? Review that report to identify any anomalies that could have taken place. 11, we look at reassessment of the market price. Where the best evaluated bids price? is higher than the price assessed at the commencement of the procurement. If the prices that suppliers have given you is higher than when you carried out the market assessment, then you need to go back and review what has happened in the market or what has gone right or what has gone wrong in the marketplace. 12, you need to carry out an administrative review. Administrative review happens where there are complaints after the evaluation of bids but before the award of contracts. So if there are any complaints from suppliers who participated in the procurement process, you need to carry out an administrative review and iron out any issues that have arisen out of this whole tendering process. 13, you determine the best evaluated bid price, which does not exceed the price determined at the commencement of the procurement process. You need to carry out procurements within your budget. And what that means is the best evaluated bid should be one that fits within your budget. If a procurement is for 500 million, you should not be taking the best evaluated bid price that exceeds that amount of money. Then 14, we look at contract management and contract monitoring. These are done concurrently. As you manage the contract, you are monitoring 
the contract as well. So having looked at this, we now look at the documents that are used in the procurement process. So it means that we need to look at the cycle and try to identify which documents will be used and at what stage. So when we're looking at a procurement requisition, if we go back to our chart here, one is procurement plan and budgeting. So we do not have any document. All we have here is a procurement plan. Two, we are looking at assessment of the market price. Even at that stage, we do not have a document. Now, three where we have procurement requisitions. This is where the user departments raise a requisition for items that they require. So what are we saying is a procurement requisition? We are saying that the procurement department may be notified of the requirements by means of a purchase order or procurement requisition. This document is prepared by the user department and it is sent to the procurement department. It also helps a buyer to know whether it is a rebuy or new buy. The document serves the following purposes. To request for the purchase of the required goods or services or to authorize the expenditure and to provide and record for audit references. So right here, what you fill in are specifications, terms of, of reference or statement of works. So when you raise a requisition, it means that you want the supplier to provide you with the items. So when you raise a requisition, it helps the supplier to know whether it is a new buy or it is a rebuy. New buy meaning you have never bought that item in the organization for use. A rebuy means that it is just a repetition of something that you had bought before. One thing you need that is key for you to note is the procurement requisition is raised by the user departments here. So all user departments must raise a requisition. Which requisition is then sent to the procurement department. So the procurement department then uses that to place orders to the suppliers. Two, we look at inquiries. And we're saying that this is a request for information or quotations sent to potential suppliers. This is done to ascertain who is willing and able to supply and at what price and terms. Inquiries is simply information that the buying organization sends out to suppliers. In what form does the buying organization send out inquiries? We are saying that this can be in form of invitation to bid, request for bid, invitation to bids, request for quotations, request for proposals, expressions of interest. What is mostly available for us in the media is the RFQs, the RFBs, and then the RFPs. Request for proposals, request for quotations, and requests to bid. Simply put, all these requests for either quotations, proposals, or bids are simply inquiries. What the buying organization wants to get from suppliers. What kind of information does the supplier have to give? So the inquiries are in form of invitations to bid, requests for quotations, requests for proposals. That is what we are familiar with, because when you go to Monday New Vision, you'll find either a request for quotation, request for proposal, or request for bid or invitation to bid. The second document, which are inquiries, remember, are sent by the buying organization to suppliers. Three, quotations, proposals, performer invoices, and bids. When the buying organization sends out inquiries, we expect a response from suppliers. The response from suppliers are either quotations, if we sent out a request for quotations, Proposals, if we sent out request for proposals, or performer invoices, or bids, 
if we sent out a request for bids. So what are the quotations, proposals, performer invoices, and bids? We are saying these are expressions of interests or proposals received from a supplier after an inquiry is sent to the public. All these are the responses that we get from suppliers in request for the inquiry that the buying organization sent out to them. So what does that mean? That the quotations, proposals, performer invoices and bids, if we go back to our chat, will help us during the review and preparation of bidding documents, approval of procurement method, bidding documents, and evaluation committee, advertising and invitation of bids, receipt and opening of bids. Because it is at this point where we send out a request or an inquiry for the goods, for, for information. So what the suppliers do is they give us the response. That whole process is what we refer to as tendering. We shall look at it in full details. So what does that mean? That the quotations, proposals, performer invoice and bids is simply what the suppliers give as a response to the buying organization. What do they have to offer that will meet the end users requirement. So the preparation of the quotations should be in line with the specifications that the end user put out. So after we have, we have received a response from suppliers and we have evaluated, we've come, come up with the best evaluated bidder, it means that we now ha have a purchase order. We are saying this is a document that authorizes the supplier to supply specified quality and quantity on the specified date and terms when a successful bidder has been selected. The purchase order should be in line with what we refer to as the purchasing rights. Right quality, right quantity at the right price in the right time and from the right source or place. So the purchase order is simply an authorization. That is when the buying organization authorizes the supplier to provide the required items. And we are saying that the procurement personnel prepare a purchase order in five copies. One thing we need to take note of is the purchase order is from the buying organization and it goes to the supplier. So where do these five copies go? We are saying the original copy goes to the supplier. A copy is to be retained in the procurement department. A copy is sent to the receiving department. This is the stores, if the organization has stores, because they are the ones that receive. Then a copy is sent to the accounting or finance department. These authorize payment. The other ones that pay eventually the purchase order after the supplier has delivered. And a copy is sent to the requisitioning or user departments. That is why the purchase order is made in five copies. Ideally, it is one original copy and the rest are photocopied, with the original going to the supplier. One is retained in the procurement department, one is sent to the receiving department, which is the stores, a copy is sent to the accounting or finance department, and then a copy is sent to the user department. When the supplier receives the purchase order, they must acknowledge receipt of a purchase order. So our next document is the order acknowledgement, and we're saying it originates from the supplier trying to inform the buying organization that order was received and yet to take action. This is done to let the buyer know that the supplier understands and accepts the order. When you send out a purchase order and you do not receive a response from the supplier, you may not be sure. So it is very important that the supplier gives you an order acknowledgement 
to confirm receipt of the purchase order and to acknowledge that they will take action. So the order acknowledgement is from the supplier to the, the buying organization. So when they acknowledge receipt of the purchase order, then we have six, which is the goods received note. In practice, this is very confusing. And I'll ask you, who do you think makes the goods received note? Is it the buying organization or the supplier? And why? Think about it. So in practice, it is, it is that the supplier will come with the goods received note. And all the buying organization will do is append their signature or write their names and something like that. So it makes the whole goods received note a confusing document. Ideally, the goods received note should be prepared by the buying organization and given to the supplier. So it should be having the logo of the receiving organization and not the supplier. So what does the goods received not say? It says this originates from buyers informing the supplier of the goods received and checked and have been found to be in good order. The purchasing department will then inform the finance that the supplier should be paid on receipt on the invoice. If there is any deviation as per the order in terms of quantity, quality, it is mentioned in this document. Simply put, the goods received note is only acknowledging receipt of goods. It is not talking about what is damaged, what has been returned, no. It is only what has been received. And it is from the buy, it originates from the buyer, that is the buying organization, informing the supplier. So whatever the supplier has delivered, the buyer has received. Seven, we look at the delivery note. The delivery note originates from the supplier and it is given to the buyer. We are saying this originates from the supplier on the delivery of the consignment and it provides everything that was in the purchase order. This allows the buyers of goods received section, the stores department, to check that the physical delivery matches with the documentation. So this is what happens. The goods received note, the delivery note, and the purchase order must match. Take note of that for the moment. Purchase order, goods received note, delivery note must match because the purchase order was an authorization for the supplier to deliver goods. So it means that whatever was in the purchase order should be what is in the delivery note as well as the goods received note. So we are saying that delivery note originates from the supplier and sent to the buyer, showing that what has been ordered for has been delivered. Eight, we have the invoice. What is an invoice? For those that know, how different is an invoice from a, from a performer invoice? What does it show? You may discuss that. Now we're saying this is a document sent by the supplier after delivery has taken place. Delivery has taken place, but what does that mean? Invoices are provided when credit transactions have taken place. Meaning that when an invoice is delivered by the supplier to the buyer, the supplier expects payment in or within a specified period of time. So we're saying it requests the buying company to pay the supplier for what was delivered. That's why I said an invoice is given for credit transactions. It originates from the supplier and the purpose is to bring to the attention of the buyer the amount due for payment for the supply or delivery of goods. Take note of this. 
the purchase order, the delivery notes, the goods received notes, and the invoice. All four documents must match because the purchase order originated from the buyer. The delivery note comes from the supplier. It is simply a photocopy of the purchase order to generate a delivery note. The goods received note ideally should match up with the purchase order and the delivery note. So it means that if the supplier demands payment, the invoice should also match the goods received note, the delivery note, and then the purchase order. The invoice is from the supplier to the buyer, demanding for payment. Nine, we look at the goods, re uh, goods returned note. What is a goods returned note? When does it happen? And why should it happen? Goods can be returned for as many reasons as you want to think about, as many as you want to think about, even that one that you thought of. And we are saying that it originates from the buyer to inform the supplier that not all the goods have been accepted due to lack of specification and due to damage over supply. Goods can be returned for various reasons. One, it is not what the buyer ordered for. Or two, they have been damaged. Or three, they do not conform to the end user's requirement. The goods returned note is from the buyer and back to the supplier, meaning anything that the buyer does not need or anything that the supplier delivered and does not conform to the buyer's need will be sent back. Please take note. As public administrators, do not accept anything that does not conform to either your specification or it will not meet the end user's requirement. Otherwise, it's not good. So 10, we have a receipt. What is a receipt? How is an invoice different from a receipt? And how many of you have ever received receipts? Mm -hmm. I know. So we are saying a receipt originates from the supplier acknowledging receipt of Funds. This is the most interesting thing. Most of us do not differentiate a receipt from an invoice. And we do not know who gives a receipt. If you have ever bought anything for cash, cash transactions, you should be given a receipt. Yay. That is what is what it is supposed to be. So receipts are for cash transactions. Invoices are for credit transactions. Once you have paid a supplier cash, you should be given a receipt as, confirm as confirmation of receipt of funds. Are we still together? Are we still following? So what does that mean? That as public administrators, you are going to hold huge amounts of money. And sometimes you're going to be used to compromise what documents you use and when you use it. Take note and please be careful. Now, one of the most interesting things is I will implore you to go and try to look out for some of these documents. How do they look like? Because some of us do not even know how some of these documents look like. If you have a procurement uh, department, please go and ask them for any of these. Maybe a purchase order, a quotation. But for quotations, you can go to Monday, New Vision, and Wednesday, Monitor. You'll find all these things. Otherwise, thank you. And let's look at public, private sector. But before we do that, if you have any questions, please go to the platform and let's have the discussion right there. 
Okay, so our topic two is public private sector procurement. What is public private sector procurement? Why do they exist? And what exactly do both of them do? Why do they coexist? Can we end here for a moment? Just end here for a moment.